Okay, more on Mistake Monday. Don't drill 3D prints. They have a tendency of snapping, so now I gotta glue that. Melt them. It works a heck of a lot better. Good morning, everyone. Uh, today we are going to be taking care of that rat nest right there. We're going to actually rack mount the Unify USG, the 8 port PoE router, and the Raspberry Pi 3, which is running Pi Hole. And what we're going to do is I've already moved this, uh, sorry, everything's backwards here. This shelf used to be over here. I moved it over, shortened it a little bit, put it uh, right above the screen, and also moved the server down a little bit and changed out this vertical rack from a 4U to a 6U. So there's actually two spots right behind here. We're going to rack that network equipment right behind there. So first, let's get rid of the server because today I'm also going to be in a separate video swapping over the internals from this old Rosewell case to the new Supermicro 846. So let's get that out of the way and get the network gear down and take it on over to the bench. Okay, so since I have 2U of space available for mounting the network stuff, 1U will be used for the network stuff itself, and the other one, let me bend down here real quick and get it, is going to be one of these. Put one out of the way. It's one of those comb filters that we can run the wires through and make it look nice and pretty. So that we will show later on. Get back in there. There we go, messed it up. But it even has the cable tie section on the back here, so as you run the wires, you can cable tie them up here for strain relief and keep it from um, pulling too much on the connectors. So that will work out great. But the star of the show right now is these 3D printed parts. I went onto Thingiverse and searched for Unify compatible mounts. And this is the best one I thought I could find. It came with one that's made for the USG. And lines up perfectly with the holes down the bottom there. So we will mount that. Then came with one for the Unify Switch 8. Which should fit pretty much like that. And again, the holes line up pretty darn good. Once I actually mount it. But yeah, we'll do that too. And then a center spacer so we can make up the 19 inches. Now, the guy I had it printed from was freaking great. I loved it. Um, I got to search on Reddit again, and I'll put the information down below. But there's actually a subreddit for people who amateurly or partially professionally print out 3D products for you. And I went on there and put out a bid for these three items to be printed. And this guy came back not the absolute cheapest but also not nearly the most expensive. But he was so meticulous in his information. He didn't just say, okay, I'll do it for 40 bucks or whatever. No, he gave references and everything else, showed his setup. It was great. So yeah, I definitely went with him. And his prints came out absolutely perfect. Like here's one that I didn't damage so far. <laughs> and they are very sturdy. They came out and, oh my God, the start... The striations on here are so small. I don't know if that's just he set his 3D printer to something really good or that's just how 3D printing is now because I've never actually done 3D printing yet. Um, this one, yeah, I had to put some glue on the front here because the front came off because my idiot felt like accidentally throwing it over my shoulder because <laughs> I lost my grip onto it and it flew about six feet. It landed right on here and snapped off. So I glued that back on and it seems to be just as sturdy as it was originally, thankfully. And the center one is glued in the center because I picked, when I went on the Thingiverse and found these, I will put a link down below for the Thingiverse files. Um, he had two different versions of this spacer and I had the guy print out the wrong one, which this one was actually about a half inch too big. So I literally had to cut it down a half inch total to shrink it a half inch and then glue it in the center again. So that's why that piece is glued. But again, she's stable and it should work perfectly fine. So what we're going to do, we're going to put this together and go from there. 
Now to put them together, I'm going to be using these nylon screws because I think they're the, probably the best application. And the way they mount is they got three holes on each side. That mounts those together and the ends have the regular 1U connectors. So let's go ahead and assemble this. And there we go. They are mounted. Now we got to figure out how we're going to mount the Unify stuff on here. Okay, so my best bet looks like, again, with nylon screws, they actually slide in here pretty nicely. And they hold a little snug, but they'll probably still spin. So I'm going to hit them with a little bit of super glue right in there just to hold them, just to tack them in place. And once I do that, I can actually slide those right through there, slide the unit in. Right there, and then just get a washer and bolt them all down. That should work nicely. So let me get that done. And there we go. There's a mount on the bottom, and she is perfectly mounted on top of there. So let's move on over to the USG. Okay, now we got the USG mounted. Now the one problem we are going to have with this is we are vertically mounting it. Is this was originally meant to be horizontally mounted, where all the weight will be distributed this way, not vertically. So there is some flex to this. So we're going to do the uh, jerry rig version of anti-flex. Drill hole, drill hole, drill hole, drill hole, zip tied together. <laughs> okay, more on mistake Monday. Don't drill 3D prints. They have a tendency of snapping, so now I got to glue that. Melt them. It works a heck of a lot better. <sighs> That's a lot better. <laughs> Let me re-glue this and fix it and we'll continue. Okay, while that super glue sets, let's zip tie this first one together. I was gonna use these, but it's just a little too big for it to get through. Yeah, that's just a little too much. And that's as big as my soldering iron goes. So let's use this instead. Now we don't want it too tight. We want it just enough that it's going to keep it from flexing downward. Yep, that keeps it from spreading. So that is perfect. Let's leave it right there. That's all we need. So let's cut off that extra. And do the same to the other side. We just can't really spread it that much because the super glue is still drying. That should be good. So let's let that super glue dry for like 20, 30 minutes or so. And uh, we'll wreck. Oh, wait. No, we won't. We still got to take care of the Raspberry Pi while this dries. So let's flip this over safely. I might put a little bit of super glue on top here after we mount the pie. So the pie is just going to get mounted right there in the center. Yep, that works nicely. That's where the big zip ties are going to come in. Okay, let's give that about 20 to 30 minutes to really cure, and uh, then we'll rack mount. So while my super glue screw up is drying, I did a lot of cable management. I moved both UPSs together, ran the wire for the power correctly. I took my Ethernet cable run and got that all cleaned up right there. The Unify USG and the router, the power is right there. And everything is passing down through on the bottom. And I gave myself a little cutout so I could have my cable runs come back on up. So now we're going to mount the uh, networking and the little cable pass through, the comb thing. So there we go. We got the comb mounted and the Unify USG stuff. So let's start running some wires. Now let's move over and take a good close look at it. 
<clears throat> so now you can see more up close. Let me use a flashlight because being this close doesn't give a lot of light. And you can see how easy it is to cable manage everything quite nicely. And that's how I got to look as well as I did. So let's go ahead and turn on the UPS and give everything power here. And there we go. We got power. You can see the light come up here and everything's starting up. Now the one thing, of course, when you're mounting it vertically, you can't see this blinking once you cover it over. You can still see the connections on the ports themselves. And as for the switch, you can see their status symbol right here blinking on my finger. But you won't be able to see the individual LEDs for each port because it's kind of blocked. So there is some drawbacks, but this saves a ton of money than selling these two units and getting actual rack mount ones. So this saves a lot of money. Okay, so everything is up and running. I got the nice blue light on the USG. Got the blue light on the router. You can see it's flashing away because now we have internet again. And you can just barely make out the blinking inside of there. So this concludes a rack mount, vertical rack mount for my network itself. Um, the new server will be put in later today and that will be a separate video. So thanks for watching. Thumbs up please. I'll see you next time.